A Malaysian official confirms that Flapperon, found on an island in the Indian Ocean, belongs to a missing airliner. But experts in France stop short of confirming it, saying there are, quote, very strong presumptions, unquote. The wing part came from Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. The most important question remains unanswered. What caused the plane to come down and where is the rest of the wreckage? Aerospace engineer and aviation expert Oliver McGee joins us now from Washington. I've been reading some of the uh, pilot and, and flight websites, Oliver. There's a lot of speculation out there among pilots uh, that, that this plane had to hit the water at a fairly uh, benign angle, like it almost glided to the surface of the ocean, because otherwise, they say, uh, that wing part would have been much more badly damaged, even crushed. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely, John. I think they were looking at uh, a strong confirmation of the seventh arc theory that came from the British firm Amasat, Emersat, for where Australian officials are firmly committed to right now. Uh, a gentle, horizontal glide of the Boeing 777 took place at the last moments. When the gas fuel was exhausted, uh, this plane just uh, dipped into the ocean and basically the hull sunk. And Hurricane-like winds underneath the uh, southern Indian Ocean would produce some breakage that is consistent with the flaperon that we're seeing over Union. So do you think it's possible that the fuselage itself is largely intact? Oh, I agree. I think so. Uh, I think that the flaperon essentially was a drift, vertical drift model uh, that we see from the Commonwealth uh, Scientific and, and Industrial Research Organization of Australia. and. We're going to find, and we want to pose a question to investigators, that this drift was about four, a quarter of a knot, at least when I'm speaking with my Australian uh, collaborator, uh, Paul uh, Scully Power. Uh, he's an, ocean, an advanced oceanographer, uh, oceanographer in Australia. And so we're really seeing that this is probably a vertical drift that was slow, but then we can po probably anticipate that other uh, types of uh, breakage would take place in the next 12 to 24 months. I, I wanted to put up for our viewers uh, an animated map that the uh, Oceanography Institute at the University of Western Australia put together. It shows uh, if, if you pinpoint the area, the general area where they think the plane came down, all of those white dots simulate possible pieces of debris coming off MH370. And you see the counterclockwise flow of the currents uh, in the Indian Ocean, taking them right over to Reunion Island. Um, it, it does seem that that's what happened to this one piece. The question is, where is the rest of it, and will this one piece help us find it? Yes, the vertical uh, drift model is of the of the flaperon is really somewhat consistent what we see uh, on the uh, seashells or barnacles that are placed. And this is a critical question that we both, John, want to propose to the French investigators in the laboratories and the oceanographers as they look into the microscope, because this would tell us how this piece drifted so many miles, it's 2,650 miles across the Indian Ocean. And at, in this vertical drift, uh, there is, it's going to be less affected by windage, which would take place in the hurricane -like levels in the southern Indian Ocean. So this is really consistent scientifically for landing the reunion. And we can probably expect that there'll be other pieces coming in the 12, next 12 to 24 months. Reunion Island, uh, you know, originally was French. Uh, is that why the French are investigating? I mean, you've got a Malaysian Airlines plane that went down off the western coast of Australia, apparently, uh, built by an American company. So why are the French leading this part of the investigation? Well, the International Civil Aviation Organization, Annex 12 and 13, requires it. Uh, Malaysia is primarily the uh, flag carrier, and they're mostly interested in the concerns of the families, but also protecting the integrity of their airline. Uh, the French are interested because they had four people uh, lost on that aircraft, and they have earlier called for uh, criminal investigations. So that's their theory 
that's not confirmed yet. And then the Australians have a very strong invested interest in this because they have committed themselves to 75,000 square miles of scouring and mapping out the ocean floor, as well as 46,000 square miles of really searching for this hull. And they will be very interested in seeing what comes from the French investigations as to so that they can fine tune their analysis with the, the arc, the seventh arc theory. I would also add, John, that uh, this also opens the door for uh, visual sightings that have been alleged because sometimes um, these uh, theories can bas basically give us something that's more confirming between the fifth arc theory and the seventh arc theory, mm -hmm. which may pre provide some credence to the British woman who found the sighting uh, uh, that was alleged before, but that's not confirmed. I want to say that's not confirmed, but it does open the door for other visual theories as well. We'll, we'll have to explore those theories in another program. Oliver McGee, an aviation expert, thank you. Thank you very much, John.